Welcome to this edition of Scripture Verse by Verse. My name is Michael Moret, and we're in the book of Matthew today, Matthew chapter 28, beginning in verse 12. So get your Bible, open it up. We may finish this book today, I'm not sure. But either way, you can study the whole Bible with me at thebibleversebyverse.com using my audio Bible messages. You can, in fact, go through the Bible four times with me at thebibleversebyverse.com. So check it out. You won't be sorry if you love God's Word. And Father, we ask that you would sanctify us by your truth. Your Word is truth. In Jesus' name, amen. Matthew 28, verse 12. And when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel, they gave large money unto the soldiers. The soldiers witnessed the resurrection of Jesus Christ, the angel that rolled away the stone. They went to the religious rulers to tell them what happened, and the religious rulers paid them off, gave them a bribe to keep their mouth shut because they didn't want word of the resurrection to get out. Hmm, real smart. Smart religious rulers, wouldn't you say? They're supposed to be religious leaders, spiritual leaders, and they cover up the resurrection because they love themselves more than they love God. And as leaders, they drop the ball, and that's an understatement. They should be out there telling everybody that Almighty God, His Son, has been raised from the dead. But, you know, you can't can't throw money at this problem and solve it But you would never convince the religious leaders of that. They bribed Judas and it worked, so now they bribed the soldiers. And sad to say, it will work again, temporarily. Bribes work. They do not work forever, but they do work for a while. And people still believe that lie today. His disciples came and took the body. So full of holes, but they still believe it because they don't want to believe the truth. And here it is, 13, saying, Say ye, his disciples came by night and stole him away while we slept. Notice the religious leader's attitude. It's still all about appearance with them. They say, tell the people this. Tell the people that so that the people will think. Who in the world cares what people think? I know a lot of people do. I know a lot of preachers and so-called pastors do. They care about what people think. I could not care less what people think. And the religious leaders, they, they didn't want the people to know that they killed the Son of God. They didn't want the people to know that Jesus was raised from the dead. They didn't want the people to know that they were wrong about Jesus. They didn't want the people to know. The problem with the religious leaders and others like them is that they care more about what people think than what God thinks. And that's also why people like that go to hell. 13. Saying, say ye, his disciples came by night and stole them away while we slept. And if this come to the governor's ears, we will persuade him and secure you. You know, and this story is so full of holes that I don't know how anyone with a half a brain could possibly believe it. Just think about it. The disciples who ran off when Jesus was arrested, do you really think that they would risk going to his tomb, which was sealed with a Roman seal and guarded by Roman guards? Do you really think they'd have the guts to do that? But let's give them the benefit of the doubt and say they did. Even if they tried, they wouldn't get past the soldiers. And even if they did, which they wouldn't, but even if they did, they would not have taken the time to unwrap the body and then fold up the linen neatly before it left or before they left. <laughs> they just wouldn't do that. The guards, the guards would not have, and by the way, the guards would not have known that the disciples took the body if they were sleeping, as the story goes. And finally, the religious leaders never did try to arrest the disciples for stealing the body. There's absolutely no validity to that lie at all, but people believe lies rather than truth because they hate the truth. 15. 
So they took the money and did as they were taught. And this saying is com commonly reported among the Jews until this day. It is. It is. That's what, that's what many believe. Many of the Jews believe this story. Even though, just study it. Think about it. Use your brain for a couple of seconds and you'll see. Can't be. But it does go to show that most people do not spend a lot of time thinking. Most people don't want to be bothered with details. They want, to be, they want to do whatever it is that they do, and they leave the thinking to others, and they will gravitate to the people who help them think the way they want to think. Forget the facts. 15. So they took the money and did as they were taught, and the saying is commonly reported among the Jews unto this day. And, you know, there are a smorgasbord of stories a smorgasbord of lies that people cling to in order to deny the reality of the resurrection Jesus of Jesus Christ. And this is one of the this is one of the big ones, but there are others. Other stories, other lies that people believe. For example, many people believe that the ladies and the apostles and the Roman soldiers and the angel all went to the wrong tomb. And that's why it was empty. They just went to the wrong tomb. The truth, Jesus came back and the women and the disciples and actually several hundred people at one time all saw him alive in his resurrected body. People will not allow themselves to be tortured and killed for a lie that they know is a lie. It's one thing to be tortured and killed and martyred for a lie when you're deceived, but to be tortured and killed and all for a lie that you know is a lie, you're not going to get people to do that. You, wouldn't, you would not get one person to die for a lie that they know is a lie. No way. They would cave in. They'd say, no, I'm lying. Don't kill me. And yet all the disciples suffered terrible persecution, and all but John were killed because they proclaimed the resurrection. You'd never get 12 people to agree, or I should say 11 people to agree to a, to a lie that they know is a lie and suffer death for it. Not happening. 16, then the 11 disciples went away into Galilee, into a mountain where Jesus had appointed them. And when they saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. This verse is a very strong witness to the accuracy of Matthew's gospel. You know, only someone who was dedicated to truth would mention the fact that some actually doubted. 18. And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Well, now, as eternal God, Jesus has always had all power. He has always had all power. He has always had all authority. But now for the first time, he has a new kind of power, a new kind of authority. His death on the cross paid for our sins. And because that's true, he now has the authority to give eternal life to anyone who repents and receives him as Lord and Savior. 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Have you ever heard this one? I'm sure you probably have. You Christians want to push your religion off on everyone else. No. We can't force Jesus on anyone, but we better do our best to tell everyone that Jesus is the only way to heaven. That's not forcing our beliefs on anybody else. It's just telling them what we know to be true. Jesus is the only way to heaven. We better, we better tell people that. You say, but most people I tell don't listen. So what? We preach Jesus as being the only way to heaven because he commands us to, not because X amount of people are, are going to say yes. We preach Jesus because he who has the Son has life, and he who does not have the Son does not have life. So, here we go. 
Go ye therefore and teach all disciples, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Step one, receive Christ. And that's only going to happen when you hear the message of the gospel. Step one, receive Christ. Step two, when you receive him, be baptized. Baptism is a command, not an option. It is a way to say to the world, I belong to Jesus. It publicly identifies you with Jesus. And that's important for Jesus. 20. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Notice, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Stop there. The most important fact of Christianity is that it is from Christ. Teach them all things that I have taught you. It comes from Christ. The Christian message comes from Christ. The teachings of Christianity must be confined only to the teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. That means the written word of God. Confine your teachings to the word of God, the teachings of Christ. If something isn't taught by scripture, it doesn't belong in the church. If something is being said by the pastor, that is just silliness, stupidity, foolishness, entertainment. It doesn't belong in his sermons. It's not about the Word of God. The teachings that come from the pulpit should be pure and simple, the Word of God. Otherwise, it doesn't belong. Meaning what? Meaning throw out, listen to this, meaning throw out all human teachings. Meaning throw out all the psycho babble that is spewed forth from modern evangelical pulpits. I don't care what James Dobson has to say. I don't care what the Minerith Meyer Clinic has to say. I don't care what this psychologist has to say. I don't care what Freud said. I don't care what any Christian psychologist so-called says. I don't care. I don't care. And so many of these modern evangelicals are forever quoting other preachers, constantly quoting you ever notice that? Well, McLaren says this about this verse, and, uh, and, and, and Matthew Henry says this, and it's, well, that's fine. Everybody needs teachers. I get it. But what about taking the Word of God, proclaiming it straight, and then boldly telling us exactly what it means and how to apply it? Speak it with authority. Don't always look to other Bible teachers and writers. Find a study. I don't, I'm, not, I'm not against Bible teachers and, and, and writers who are filled with the Holy Spirit and stick to the Word of God. I'm not against that. But throw out anything that is at variance with the Word of God and stick to the Bible because it attains the Holy Spirit-inspired words of God. 20 again teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Jesus never leaves anyone as long as they want him. We grieve Christ when we sin, but he'll stick with us through holiness and sin, through good times and bad, through our faithfulness and our unfaithfulness. He will never leave us. He will not leave us no matter what. He will get us to heaven no matter what. Always remember this. If you want him, he wants you with all your flaws and everything else, all the other baggage. He still wants you as long as you want him. If we turn to him or in some cases return to him, he will accept us every single time. Never doubt that. And I'm out of time. If you would like to be a part of this ministry, you can be. When you're studying at thebibleversebyverse.com, and you take a break, please remember to pray for me, pray for God's word, and also click the donate button at the top of the front page at thebibleversebyverse.com and prayerfully give as the Lord may lead. Thank you for 
spending this time with me in Matthew. See you next time.